Solving quadratic equations by graphing, part one. In this lesson, our friend Joe Quadratic will be solving quadratic equations by graphing. With this method, you will be able to solve quadratic equations such as this one, n squared minus 2n minus 3 equals 0, without a calculator. In order to graph this, something will have to be different. With only one unknown, there is no way for him to graph on a coordinate plane. In order to graph, Joe will need to change this quadratic equation into a quadratic function. The first thing he does is change the zero on the right side to a y. The next step is to convert the n's to x's so it is graphable on an x-y coordinate plane. And so now he has y equals 8x minus 2x minus 3. Joe has now created a quadratic function from a quadratic equation that he can graph on a coordinate plane. For cosmetic purposes, Joe switches the function to have the dependent variable y on the left side where he is more accustomed to working. Joe now creates a table where he will obtain points to be graphed. He starts with the input of 0. Joe sees where he needs to substitute for each x in the function to evaluate for x equals 0. So this is the zero plugged into the function. This simplifies to y equals negative three. He places the negative three into its place in the table. He now selects an input value of one. Here is one plugged in. Here we have one minus two minus three. For x equals one, y equals negative four negative 4 goes into the table here. Joe repeats the process for some more input values. This is what he gets for all the shown inputs. He now gets his graph paper set up to graph the points. He plots his first point, the y-intercept, at 0, comma, negative 3. He plots the second point at 1, comma, negative 4. He proceeds to plot the remaining five points now he can connect the dots with a curve to graph the function. After graphing, he can pinpoint the solutions where the function crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 1 and x equals 3. These solutions are also called roots, x-intercepts, and zeros. Going back to the original unknown, n, he says that the solutions for his original equation are n equals negative 1 and n equals 3. Here's the next equation we'll look at, negative x squared plus 3x equals negative 4. Stop the video, see if you can solve this one by yourself by graphing. Hint, you'll need to set the right side of the equation equal to 0, then replace that 0 on the right side with the dependent variable y. Restart the video after you've graphed it and I hope that you've solved by graphing. Joe gets the right side equal to zero by moving the negative four across the equal sign to the left side. This becomes, on the left side, negative x squared plus three x plus four equals zero. He changes it into a function by changing a zero do a y and swapping sides so the y is on the left side of the equal sign. So now he has y equals negative x squared plus 3x plus 4. Joe then uses the function to create a table and these are the values he found in the table. Joe plots the points. He connects the dots by drawing the curve that connects them. He sees the two points where the function crosses the x-axis at x equals negative 1 and x equals 4 and writes down the solutions here. He writes his answers in brackets, which is set notation. In set notation within brackets, each number separated by a comma is an answer. If the numbers are in parentheses, that would be the notation for a coordinate pair of an x and y value but negative 1 and 4 are not a coordinate pair but distinct answers. Joe observes that if he looks at the table he used to draw the graph he finds the solutions here 
at negative one comma zero and four comma zero. This means that if Joe gets pretty good at reading tables and finds where y equals zero, he may not have to draw the graph to find his solutions. You might remember from the video where Joe Quadratic was introduced uh, to the first quadratic equation he tried to solve, but he could not do it. He tried to combine 3n squared and 5n, but he couldn't do it because they were unlike terms. Now Joe will try to solve this quadratic equation by graphing. Joe changes the 0 to y and the n to x to convert it to a function he can graph on an xy coordinate plane. Then he switches it around to get the dependent variable on the left side. So now he has y equals 3x squared plus 5x minus 2. Now he gets a table with input and output values. Then he graphs his points. And there are the plotted points. He draws the parabolic curve over the points. He sees one solution, or x intercept, at x equals negative 2. And it makes sense because we see it over here in the table also. But what about the other solution? We see that it's here between x equals 0 and x equals 1, but where exactly? We'll just leave it a question mark here until we find it. In the table we don't see that second 0 for y, but notice that y is negative 2 at x equals 0 and 6 at x equals 1. One thing Joe can do is try different numbers for x until he finds the second solution. Here he tries 1 half or 0.5. He simplifies to, it simplifies to y equals 1.25, pretty close, but still not zero and not a solution. Next he tries halfway between zero and 0 0.5, 0 0.25. He gets negative 0.5625, closer to zero, but still not zero, so one-fourth or 0 0.25 is not a solution either. Next he's going to try 0.35 for x between 0.25 and 0.5. He gets y equals 0.1175, even closer, but still not zero. Joe realizes that to get that second answer, it might be possible by continuing his search, but Joe has some important things to do. This is starting to take away from his basketball time. He remembers that his teacher was going to show him how to solve quadratic equations using the graphing calculator, and for that method to solve this problem, Joe will return in solving quadratic equations by graphing part three. Part two will kind of set it up by showing how to solve basic quadratic equations by graphing. This has been Solving Quadratic Equations by Graphing, part one. Thanks for viewing.